Uh, good morning everyone and welcome to analog electronic circuits. This is lecture 10. In the last class, uh, we looked at uh, another way of uh, biasing uh, the transistor in a way that the, uh, the, the current in the transistor remains robust uh, with variations in, uh, uh, in supply voltage as well as um, uh, threshold voltage changes in the transistor. And uh, we said that in on an IC, of course, it is possible to use a current source stuck in the source, but in a discrete circuit uh, where transistors are expensive, it, uh, you basically put some resistor R x in the source. So, this is R 2, this is R 1 and this is V d d and uh, uh, this is how we bias the transistor and uh, it is understood that when compared to a current source, the V d d uh, that has to be used here is, is much greater than what you would otherwise need right had R x been a current source all right. And we also discovered that uh, you know uh, R x has to be large if you have to get bias in sensitivity and what is the meaning of large in this context. Yeah, so, that G m R x uh, uh, product must be uh, much larger than 1 which uh, boils down to the voltage drop across the resistor R x being much larger than the half the overdrive voltage. Hmm? Now, uh, how do we make this uh, a common source amplifier? What do we need to do? What all do we need to do to make this a common source amplifier? We bias the transistor all right. So, uh, let us quickly figure out what we need to do to uh, make this a common source amplifier. Okay. Well, we need an input. So, basically uh, that is V i that is R s okay. and we need a load and one way of doing it is okay fine. I mean if you do not like this load okay. all right what else are we done? Yeah, this has to be a common source amplifier. So, the, the source has to be incrementally grounded and uh, we have to put a C x there where again all these capacitors have to be infinite all right. So, this gives you uh, a common source amplifier and all right. So, uh, as uh, we have seen uh, over the last couple of lectures. Uh, the fundamental way of stabilizing something or making sure that something is a constant uh, is uh, basically through the use of negative feedback, where the idea is you compare what you have with what you want and uh, and uh, and kick uh, uh, you know the uh, the output in the right direction. So, as to uh, make sure that the difference between what you have and what you want is is 0 right. So, having looked at uh, you know uh, informally looked at negative feedback uh, 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 you know the last few lectures, uh, let us now you know do a more uh, uh, formal uh, way of looking at it right. Uh, the basic idea behind negative feedback as uh, we have just seen is the following. Uh, we have an output let us say again the output we uh, since we are working uh, with electrical networks we are we will call the output a voltage or a current or whatever, but uh, that is not really necessary. Uh, if you are working with the mechanical system, the output could be pressure, the output could be uh, position, it could be uh, uh, velocity, anything correct. So, we have some desired output, uh, some output which we want to be equal to some, uh, uh, some desired input. We, we could also uh, have it such that we want a fraction of the output to be equal to a to equal to equal to a, to a, to a desired input right so in the, rather than make v not equal to v in we would like to make a fraction of that f times v not equal to v in so uh, so what do you do well what would you do if you are in the lab you would say basically say i will find the fraction v not that will give me f times v naught 
what will I do? I will compare it with with V in and I will work on the difference between the uh, what I have which is f times v naught and uh, v in and this is my so called error voltage right all right and what will I do with this error voltage what does it mean if v e is greater than 0 what does it mean I mean if V is greater than 0, it means that V in is greater than F times V naught, which basically means V naught is too low or too high. Yeah, if V is greater than 0, it means that uh, you know V O is, uh, is uh, yes, Tata Goto. Yeah, so uh, if V is greater than 0, it basically means that the output is not as high as it should be and therefore should be increased correct and therefore uh, the output voltage v naught is controlled by this error voltage ve so uh, basically what you have is a voltage control voltage source with some let's assume some gain a all right okay and uh, uh, so basically a, a must be positive because if uh, uh, if ve is positive it means that vo must be it means that vo is smaller than it should be which basically means that it must be increased so this is the sign of the peak all right now uh, how do we uh, of course, uh, I mean this is a, a, a almost a trivial uh, uh, signal flow graph to solve, right? Uh, but in any case, uh, you know, let's uh, uh, let's look at it in a little more detail and let's do this with pictures rather than uh, than words, uh, so that it gives us some intuition. Uh, so, V and I mean, so given A and F, right? So assume that A and F are known and V in is known. What are the unknowns that we need to find? V e and V o. So, well, it is pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, uh, what is V e? V e is nothing but V in minus F times V o, and uh, uh, what is uh, V o? A times V. E. All right. So, we can uh, of course, uh, uh, solve these uh, simultaneous equations for V e and V o, we will uh, we will actually do that graphically and uh, so how will we if we want to solve these two equations graphically, what will we do? So, basically uh, what the suggestion is that you plot uh, V o versus V e okay. So, the first equation is what V e this is basically saying that V o is nothing but minus V e by f all right plus V in by f. All right, so, uh, how will this look like? What should be on the x axis and what should be on the y axis? V o on the y axis, very good, V e on the x axis, okay. And the way we have written it, y is m x plus c. So, what is that? It is a straight line. What is the y intercept on the y axis? V in by f, okay. All right, and the slope is? minus 1 by f. So, it basically is some line like that. Okay. 
okay. Now, uh, that is that equation done. What comment can you make about the uh, second equation? It is a straight line passing through the origin with a slope. All right. So, now uh, uh, what is the output? We plotted both the equations, now what? The point of intersection basically uh, will give you what the output voltage is okay. and uh, it is uh, very this slope is A. So, as A becomes larger and larger, what comment can you make about the red line, right. As A becomes larger and larger, the red line becomes vertical and the what, what comment can you make about uh, the, uh, the, the point of intersection, yeah. Uh, so, as the sanity check is you know as A tends to infinity, V O tends to V in by F and V error tends to V in tends to 0, all right. That makes sense, right. So, basically uh, this uh, uh, as A tends to infinity that basically means that even if you had an infinitesimal error voltage the gain is so large that it would kick the output node so hard that the error becomes 0. Okay. Uh, so, you know in, in, in some sense the uh, this uh, A being very large is, uh, is analogous of A being infinity is uh, uh, you know is analogous to having a, a legal system in a society where which is very 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 strict right i mean if somebody told you that uh, you know uh, i don't know if you spit on the road uh, you know i will take a gun and shoot you right okay then uh, you know uh, people will be uh, very very careful that's uh, basically saying that if your desired behavior deviates even infinitesimally from the uh, 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 i mean if the actual behavior deviates infinitesimally from your desi desired behavior the consequences are going to be no, very very severe right and uh, so therefore uh, that's equivalent to saying that you know a is infinite all right on the other hand if your legal system says oh well anything is okay you know you can spit on the road you know you can throw paper everywhere and all this stuff then you know you see what you see you understand nothing happens so that's basically saying you have a, a feedback loop which is where the the gain of the forward amplifier is is very very small right that basically means that if a is small what comment can you make about uh, uh, the red line a, its slope becomes smaller uh, the and therefore the error voltage ve which is the difference between what you want and what you have becomes larger and larger all right okay that's the first thing uh, 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 having seen that what comment can you make about the actual voltage now? Uh, well, you can use uh, uh, simple geometry to figure this out. Let us do that. Yeah, that slope, let me remind you, is A. All right. So, what comment can we make about this guy here? Let us call that, uh, yeah, let us actually 
abuse notation and actually call that also VE. Or what is the V a point of intersection? So, V e times uh, so V in times f minus the slope of that line is f, I mean it is 1 by f and it is negative. So, what does that mean? If you travel V e in the horizontal direction, you have dropped by you started here at V in by f, you have traveled forward by V e the slope of that line is 1 by f. So, what by definition what is the uh, uh, minus minus V e by f equals you go with this line you started at 0 you have gone forward by V e the slope is a this must be a times V e which basically means that V e is nothing but Pardon? V in upon 1 plus A f. Sanity check as A tends to infinity, V e tends to 0, when A tends to 0, well you get uh, you know V in. Does it make sense? Okay. So, if V e is uh, uh, you know uh, v in by uh, 1 plus a f what comment can you make about v o v o is simply nothing but a times v e which is nothing but 1 over f times a f over 1 plus a f times v n. Does it make sense? Sanity check again. Okay. As A tends to infinity, well, V out must be equal to V in by F, right? That we intuitively knew because if, if uh, this character uh, uh, has a gain of infinity, then a small, uh, even a my infinitesimally small error will go and kick A so hard that I mean uh, uh, or infinitesimal error will cause A to kick V O so hard that uh, F times V O is going to become equal to V N. Alright. So, everywhere we see that this quantity uh, A times F keeps showing up alright okay. and physically how can we interpret uh, A times F? When you, when you look at this picture you know and if you have to attach a physical meaning to this number a times f uh, what do you think uh, we can do or how will we interpret this yeah so basically this uh, uh, this quantity uh, a times f can be gotten by doing the simple the following simple thing you break the loop okay and uh, uh, you apply, I mean you can set the input to 0, so that this does not exist alright. You yank the loop on one side by delta v correct. What comes there? If that is delta v, what is uh, what is that quantity? this is delta v, what is that uh, uh, at the input of the amplifier it is minus delta v. So, at the output of the amplifier it is minus a times delta v. So, what comes back here? Yeah, so, it goes down in so, and it goes down a f delta v. Okay. So, two things to notice, one is that if you break the loop 
all right you can see that there is a uh, sort of a restoring mechanism which tends to pull the the uh, the uh, the excitation back all right so in other words if you break the loop and apply an excitation at one end what comes back must be in the in the opposite direction of your excitation that is when you know that it is negative, negative feedback all right and uh, the uh, the magnitude uh, the ratio of the magnitudes of the excitation of the response to the excitation is what a times f right and uh, because we have broken the loop and basically what we are doing is we have broken the loop and measured the gain of uh, this uh, this uh, the opened loop correct okay so that is why this is called the you oh yeah it's basically called the loop gain right which is uh, the gain that you get when you break the loop and uh, uh, does it make sense so this quantity af is called the loop gain equation here the output voltage is nothing but 1 over f which is the so the output voltage is v in times f which is the output we would get if a was infinity times this quantity loop gain by 1 plus loop gain as the loop gain tends to infinity the output voltage will tend to the ideal output which is v in over f all right and uh, so f is called the feedback block or the feedback factor sometimes all right this is called the forward amplifier okay and uh, so a times f is is the loop gain this is all jargon okay and vo by v in which is this quantity 1 over f times loop gain by loop gain plus 1 is called the closed loop gain all right okay so now we have a whole lot of jargon there is the forward amplifier there is the feedback block there is the loop gain and there is the closed loop gain okay the closed loop gain is insensitive to the forward amplifier gain as long as the loop gain tends to infinity right which is simply saying that the closed loop gain is 1 over f okay if a tends to infinity okay now to summarize given i mean by the way uh, this loop gain do you think uh, i mean uh, you know i broke the loop at the uh, output of the feedback block but would we get a different loop gain if we broke the loop elsewhere right it as you can see regardless of where you break the loop the uh, the gain that you get remains the same right and regardless of where you break the loop if you yank one side up what comes back is in the opposite direction so this is the test for negative feedback if you want to figure out if there is negative feedback uh, uh, in a loop you break the loop you yank one side up see what comes back what comes back must be in a direction that is opposite to what you have applied.